Hello everyone, uh, this is lecture 21 and in this lecture we'll talk about the high frequency um, electromagnetic wave measurement. Um, the high frequency measurement of the electromagnetic pa parameters above the megahertz are conducted within the framework of the wave propagation concept rather than the equivalent circuit. Measurement technique includes a transmission method reflection techniques, and resonant phenomena, and free space. So in general, like they have, you know, in network analyzer like this, they also comes with this kind of a proof, and it's a coaxial proof. And at the end of this tip, there are electrode, some kind of an electrical wire. And at the, at, at the tip of this electrical wire, there are electromagnetic wave emitted. And uh, when you have the medium like this, you get the reflection from the of the emitted signal. So the mostly measurement at high frequency use the waveguide and also the uh, use the concept of the reflection. So if the this is the waveguide, you put the uh, some kind of a sensors like this coaxial proof with, within this uh, waveguide and this is the material that you want to measure of the electromagnetic waves. So wave propagation in coaxial lines take place between the inner core and the outer shell of the cable um, in the case of the, uh, this kind of a coaxial cable and when you have a material like this an incident wave and the reflective wave, you are measuring the reflection coefficient and this could be a complex number, uh, reflection coefficient and from this we can estimate the uh, kappa asterisk, the permittivity value. So in reflection techniques, the complex reflection coefficient R asterisk is determined by comparing the reflected signal ER and the emitted instant signal EI. So R star is reflective reflection coefficient is ER over EI. And when we use the uh, complex reflection coefficient, uh, it captures both the phase and amplitude information. So the um, impedance of this material, ZM asterisk, can be expressed as a function of the reflection coefficient and the z naught asterisk. So um, z naught asterisk is given as 377 ohm in free space. So if you measure the r asterisk, the reflection coefficient, then you can identify the uh, zm. And once you get the, uh, the impedance, the complex impedance of the material, then using this equation, you can identify like uh, mu and the uh, epsilon asterisk, or which is the um, permittivity, right? Complex permittivity. And if it's non-ferromagnetic, um, this mu value will go to one, so that the value becomes more, uh, the equation becomes more simple. So for the non-ferromagnetic material. Um, if you measure the R asterisk, you can get the ZM asterisk, and from there, kappa and kappa double prime, double yeah, prime can be measured at the high frequency. Um, and if it's ferromagnetic, then unknown is a little bit more because the, you don't know the um, magnetic permeability of the material. So in this case, you have to measure the uh, reflected signal and also transmitted signal together, so that you can you can have uh, more information to uh, estimate these four parameters. So um, then, how do we calibrate? Uh, it's uh, the same concept with the low frequency LCR uh, circuit analysis, and because the, we know that the, if it's just free space, just the air or the vacuum space, then the reflection coefficient will be um, one 
and the permittivity uh, also relative permittivity will be one so we can calibrate that using that or if you have a metallic metallic material like a copper surface or surface or um, aluminum surface that's in contact with the uh, uh, sensor then the, the refraction coefficient will be minus one so then using that also you can uh, calibrate its source circuit condition and uh, because we know the complex permittivity of the water at a certain frequency uh, we can use this kind of water as a standard solution at a certain you know, standard temperature um, difference in the predicted and the actual value is used to correct the measurement so this is how it looks like so this is the coaxial cable cable proof and uh, this is the waveguide and you can put the uh, liquid inside or oh, I think that this is the waveguide yeah and what else yep this goes to into here and you no know, you can download the data from the the equipment open circuit condition the refraction coefficient is zero so the cm star is g naught and short circuit condition and r star is one so that the with conducting material and you can get the uh, mm, you can calibrate testing with the material with a known response such as water and skin depth is small and uh, it only measures the local measurement so actually when you have a uh, this kind of proof and when it emits the wave the skin depth is in soil it's about several millimeter so it's only capturing the uh, uh, certain uh, very limited space if the particle size should uh, the particle size should be 50 times smaller than the transverse direction of the waveguide to avoid the backscatter or uh, and packing problems um, coaxial cable is very sensitive so the cable should stay um, con like steadily and air gap if there's air gap and uh, it can uh, create the capacitance effect so the you have to machine the flat sample surface and the sample thickness should be uh, bigger than the uh, the skin depth and uh, this is the limitation mm, and then so the um, the high frequency measurement is if you have a equipment the proper equipment actually the equipment itself is very sensitive to the surrounding noise but the interpretation is very easy um, so you can plot in different with different axis and y axis here you can plot it uh, over the frequency or kappa prime and kappa double prime or z prime versus the z double prime y prime uh, versus y double prime then they all have a uh, different names of it so nyquist plot organ plot modified organ plot uh, the nyquist plot uh, bode plot etc etc and each all highlight a different characteristic of the uh, the response so for example cold cold plot highlights the relaxation mechanism and the spectrum shows the frequency spectrum frequency response um, yeah. so the example of the uh, spectrum and different impedance plots are this um, this is the kappa prime or versus the frequency and kappa double prime versus the frequency and this is a uh, kappa double prime versus kappa prime and y double prime versus y prime etc etc um, so then polarization uh, if depending on the where you measure right it could be a equivalent circuit if it's like less than megahertz if it's bigger than the megahertz then the, it will be okay this is too big maybe like from here to somewhere here in this region this is the wave propagation okay. and it all it's a little bit overlap with the orientational uh, polarization um, 
So uh, we can think about the analogy between the damped harmonic motion, like single degree of freedom system, and the LCR circuit. Uh, if the variable is the displacement in the mechanical system, then Q charge is the, the variable, and the driving term will be the force in the, the single degree of freedom system, but here it's going to be potential. And natural frequency is given by the stiffness over the mass, and here given by the 1 over inductance times capacitance. And the coefficient of the variable, the stiffness and 1 over C, and the damping, which is uh, what? du over dt, yeah, this is proportional to uh, uh, the i, right, and r, and uh, the mass is also related to acceleration, so it's a second derivative of the uh, displacement, and l is what, second der uh, derivative of the i, right, and dq over dt is i, so i and r is in phase, and l and i is in uh, out of phase. So it, they have a very similar characteristic. Huh? Mm -hmm. The wave equation is this in the signal degree of freedom system, and this is the uh, um, the equation that uses the uh, the Q as a variable and L R C circuit. So um, we can analyze, you know, with the impedance as an equivalent circuit, uh, depending on how they are connected. Here, this is a series LCR circuit. This represents the ionic and electronic polarization, and this kind of uh, configuration, like when they are uh, connected in series, they give you, they show the resonance response, and. Uh, equivalent admittance will be expressed as in here if you derive it using the query of um, the loops and resonant frequency will be like this so then you can plot y the real value of the y asterisk and the imaginary value of the y asterisk over the frequency and also you can get the kappa prime and the kappa double prime and peak value of the real uh, admittance occurs at the resonance frequency and is equal to 1 over r. Where is it? Yep, here. And what else? The row frequency limit is in the imaginary value is c here. And the high frequency limit in the imaginary value c over omega is l. And divide relaxation circuit is one of those of the widely used one. You have a C a two capacitor uh, connecting in parallel and the one resistor, and uh, resulting equivalent circuit analysis. A result of the equivalent circuit analysis will give you the admittance of this equation, and this represents the orientation of polarization of the water. So we've seen this kind of uh, relaxation behavior, right? When you have the water. So then, what about the soil? You have a water and rock, or the water, water and clay. Then the rock will give you the special polarization, right? For the mineral. So in here, you can have two units: water unit and the clay unit. Or the rock mineral unit and both have a different R and the C so then you get this equation so this represents the uh, the first unit one and unit two um, then uh, it will plot it will be plotted like this with some constant value so if you know the r2 r1 and c1 and c2 you can plot it like this 
And this is very similar to what we observe in the wet clay and wet soil. Um, in the advanced, advanced model, um, you know, in some researchers, you know, some researchers also model the clay particle with the double diffuse layer with this kind of a uh, uh, circuit. So if the elect uh, electric field is applied in vertically, or perpendicular to the clay, uh, clay surface, clay face, then this is the one double layer right here part and uh, there are side part and the mineral part this is the particle and there are another water so and top and bottom parallel top and bottom layer of the water and particle and series of layer where the water and the minimal act in mineral act in parallel so that the uh, this is the uh, the result of that so y1 and y2 a uh, y1 and y2 and the mineral is the y3 and then it becomes like this. So uh, for the electrical response of the uh, wet soil or the wet like, saturated rock, um, you can um, create any model with the L and R and C units represent each component of the phase or like, mineral components inside. Then you can uh, find some the fitting parameters and obtain, estimate, and extract the, uh, each um, material properties as a function of the volume fraction. Um, thank you for listening.